everyone, Nicole here from Writer's Brook. If you're new to this channel, I'm an author, a former high school English film studies and theater teacher, and I currently work in higher education. Writer's Brook is a deep dive into the world of storytelling, from movies to books, TV, video games, and more. Today's video is the second episode in my travel vlog series, where I will be recommending stories to watch, read, or play that are set or filmed in the locations that I visit. I recently spent time in Europe on a long vacation, and I want to share the experience with you. Episode one of the series was about my time in Scotland, so if you haven't seen that one yet, you'll want to check it out. The link will be down below. Now, on to England. I have to say that England was definitely my favorite place we went to on this trip. As someone who studied history in school, specifically focusing on British studies, it was truly phenomenal going there. Walking in buildings that were hundreds of years older than my country was eye-opening. It really brought the history to life. Our first stop was Windsor Castle, a residence of the British monarchy. While we were there, King Charles happened to arrive. We saw his car driving up. It was pretty cool. Windsor Castle has a special place in my heart because it has ties to Arthurian legend, something I particularly enjoyed studying in school. King Arthur, also known as the once and future king, is prevalent today in our pop culture. And he was surprisingly already a myth during the Middle Ages, the time in which modern day adaptations of the story typically depict him in. However, according to historians, Arthur most likely lived sometime during the Roman occupation of England, but many debate whether he was even real at all. King Edward III, who lived at Windsor, was actually fascinated by the myth of King Arthur, and he wanted to shape his own rule after the way Arthur was known to have reigned. Unfortunately, here at Windsor, I only have video from the grounds because they don't allow footage to be taken inside. Here we are at Oxford, an institution that is over nine centuries old. Oxford has an impressive list of alumni, including 28 British prime ministers, at least 30 international leaders, 55 Nobel Prize winners, and 120 Olympic medal winners, according to their website. While we were at Oxford, we had the opportunity to get a tour from a guide that you'll see in many of these shots holding her umbrella and using it to point out different locations at the university. It was here that friendships were forged between the literary masters J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis. It was also here that numerous executions took place, including those of the Oxford Martyrs, who were Protestant bishops killed by Mary Queen of Scots. The architecture in Oxford is magical, and not surprisingly, it has been the filming location for several movies and TV shows over the years. Next, we make our way to Westminster in the center of London. Here you can see Big Ben, one of the most iconic locations in England. Fun fact, 
Big Ben is actually the name of the huge bell inside the clock tower. The tower itself is called the Elizabeth Tower, and it is connected to the Houses of Parliament. It used to be one of the monarchy's palaces until Henry VIII gave it to Parliament because he found it too drafty. A family friend of ours set up a once-in-a-lifetime tour for us where we got to see both the House of Commons and the House of Lords. It was absolutely breathtaking. They don't allow filming past this particular hallway, so this is all the footage I have of this location. Next, we have the Tower of London. Another historic castle of the British monarchy, the tower is a fortress and prison where many murders and executions were committed, including those of Henry VI, the children of Edward IV, and even Queen Anne Boleyn. Yeoman warders, or beef eaters as they are more commonly referred to, were originally part of the Yeoman of the Guard, the monarch's personal guard, and have been stationed at the tower since Tudor times. The tower is home to the crown jewels, which were spectacular. They are a true national treasure. Again, filming is not allowed inside where the ornate jewels are on display, but I was able to film some of the impressive armory inside the tower. Side of the tower, we have what's called the Traitor's Gate, where those who were to be beheaded entered the tower. And then, the Tower Bridge, which is arguably the most famous bridge in London. We also went to Harrods, which is one of the leading department stores in the world. It was so massive, you could easily get lost inside. I know, because I did. <laughs> they had an amazing set of escalators with architectural design based on ancient Egypt, which is really cool. and they even had a Gordon Ramsay restaurant inside the store. Then we went to the British Museum. Honestly, I could have spent at least a month in there. It's gorgeous and has some of the most amazing historical collections from around the world, including the Rosetta Stone. Walking through the museum felt like walking through ancient and modern history. It was an incredible experience seeing ancient artifacts from around the world. It really brought history to life. Finally, 
Finally, we visited Buckingham Palace and saw the changing of the guard, a ceremony where the Royal Guard currently on duty hands off protecting the palace to the next group of guards who will be in charge of security for the royal family and their visitors. It was absolutely magical to see all of these sites in person. Now we make our way to recommendations. You can't talk about stories set in or written by people from the United Kingdom without talking about J.R.R. Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, and J.K. Rowling. Their work has come to define the fantasy genre not only as bedtime stories for children, but as a serious genre that can span cultures, lifetimes, and languages. Their works have been adapted into movies, miniseries, video games, merchandise, board games, and even amusement parks. They didn't start the fantasy genre by any means, but their work has shaped the genre into what it is today. I highly recommend that you read their works or watch some of the movies based on them. Agatha Christie and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's stories of private detectives have come to define the mystery genre, just like Tolkien, Lewis, and Rowling did for fantasy. They didn't create the genre, but Christie's Miss Marple, an elderly crime-solving spinster, her Belgium detective with a prominent mustache, Poirot, and Doyle's violin-playing genius, Sherlock Holmes, are three of the most beloved fictional detectives in history. There have been so many different adaptations of these stories in all mediums from movies, video games, books, TV, and more. You could spend weeks and weeks reading these stories, playing them, and watching content based on them. Not only are countless stories based on their work, but the conventions they established have come to define what readers and consumers of the mystery genre expect to see in a good story. These stories are highly entertaining and thought-provoking. Be sure to check them out. Based on the mystery series by G.K. Chesterton and starring Mark Williams, who you might recognize as Arthur Weasley from the Harry Potter movies, Father Brown follows the exploits of a crime-solving Roman Catholic priest. The story is set in the small fictional village of Kembleford, England, and is filmed in the village of Blockley, England. Currently, there are 10 seasons of the series, and there are more episodes on the way. There's even a spin-off series called Sister Boniface Mysteries that sees a part-time forensic scientist and a genius nun solving crimes in another small village in England. The series has two seasons so far. In a world where ghosts now roam the streets of London, a startup agency of ghost hunting teenagers are faced with a mystery that's much larger than they expected. Lockwood & Co. is based on the first two books in Jonathan Stroud's series of the same name. Unfortunately, Netflix canceled the award-winning series after only one season, despite it hitting number one in the world. But after The Warrior Nun's surprising renewal a year after its cancellation, Lockwood & Co. fans have a revived sense of hope that the show might still have a second season to come. With a spooky mystery, funny dialogue, and a lovable cast, the series brought the books to life in a magical way that's well worth the watch. Hopefully, if enough of us are watching and asking for a season two, we might just get to see more of the story adapted for the screen. An ordinary British teenager finds himself embroiled in a conspiracy after finding out that his uncle worked for MI6 and was murdered in the line of duty. In order to solve the mystery, he gets enlisted to go undercover at an isolated boarding school in the Alps. This series is based on the novels by celebrated novelist and screenwriter Anthony Horowitz, who specializes in mystery and suspense. The books were written for a juvenile audience, but the show is aimed at an older audience. It's great for fans of movies like The Born Identity. There are currently two seasons of the series with a third on the way. Most of the show is set in the heart of London as well as other cities in England and around Europe. I don't think I can talk about recommendations for the United Kingdom and not talk about Doctor Who. The show is a staple of British TV, and it has been one of the longest-running sci-fi series ever, premiering in 1963 and running until 1989, and then restarting again in 2005. 
The story follows the Doctor, an alien Time Lord who goes on endless adventures to save humanity and other alien races from those who wish to do harm or rule the universe. Time Lords regenerate into another form, aka a different actor, when they die, which is why the show has been able to continue for so long. So far, there have been 14 different Doctors, with more to come. I personally think the Matt Smith and Karen Gillan era is the golden age of the series, but that's just because I love Amy, Rory, and River's dynamic with the Doctor during that time so much. The series is filmed throughout the UK, with lots of episodes focusing on stories in London, but countless others filmed in areas of Wales and Scotland specifically as well. Alright, this concludes today's video. Next time, we'll be making our way to mainland Europe for the next leg of my trip. But for now, it's your turn. What are your favorite recommendations for stories set in the United Kingdom? Tell me in the comments and please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Until next time, friends, find your story.